Welcome to chapter 1.3, Beyond Euler. What's interesting here is that when we have a graph, it's extremely common, especially like in a town, Let's make all of the intersections, the vertices, obvious. Nothing subtle here. Let's suppose we need to snow plow this. Well, one thing that we want to do, just imagine these are fairly small paths, so we, we pass each edge exactly once. Snow plowing equals an Euler circuit. But you take a look at this graph, and it doesn't take you very long before you have found many vertices that are odd. That means there is no Euler circuit. Does that mean you don't snow plow? No. It means that what you have to do is you have to find a route, and you may have to drive on an edge twice. This is called Eulerization. Now, when we Eulerize, what we choose to do is we put in edges that already exist, because imagine if this is a couple of big houses here. You just can't drive from here to here through somebody's backyard with your snowplow. So Eulerization requires us to try to drive this, starting someplace, get home, and repeat as few edges as possible. Now, we're not going to use the length of edges, but we could. And then I'm going to take a moment to first get all of the odds. And now a quick check if I count all the odds. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There should be an even number. Now, what we need to do is we need to duplicate edges that we're going to indicate with a dashed line and we're going to drive the dashed line and the regular line, and when you drive the, the dashed line it's or the regular line that's been dashed, you're duplicating a driving on there, so you're not actually plowing or something. So here's a common algorithm. It's called the greedy algorithm. Now, a, a very typical greedy algorithm would be when you're packing your car. You put in the sofa first, it's the biggest. You've got to make sure that works. If you look at all these odd vertices, there's a couple that are, in some sense, many duplicate edges away from other ones. For example, these two odd vertices are only one edge apart. But this guy here, one, he's two steps to his nearest odd, and this guy is two steps to his nearest odd. So I'm going to deal with the troublesome edges first. So I'm going to pick this one who's two steps away, and I'm going to connect him to one of his nearest neighbors. Now notice this. If I go here and here with duplicating, this guy actually has a nearby neighbor, but this guy doesn't. So I'm going to go to another guy that's far away. Now I want you to count the valence now. This if this edge is going to be counted in the graph, this is called a new graph, this guy is now a 2, so it's no longer odd. And this guy is a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. He's still even, but this guy is now 1, 2, 3, 4. He's no longer odd. By having done that, I've reduced the total number of odd valences. Now, who else is still far away? He's got a near neighbor. He's got a near neighbor, but only one. He's got a near neighbor. Now, this guy doesn't have a near neighbor. Near in the sense of how many duplicate edges away. So let's take care of that guy. Let's bring him to one of his duplicate edges. So let's go up like this. This is just an arbitrary choice. I could have gone to either. I'm going to do this. And now this is now a 4 because 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. I've changed from a 2 to a 4. This is 1, 2, 3, 4. So again, we got rid of two odds. This guy's got one nearby, nearby. Mm, this looks like, let's, let's take care of this guy. These are now fours. Let's take care of this guy. These are now 
fours. And oh, this guy doesn't have a near neighbor anymore. That was his nearest, and that was only his nearest. So this guy now is somebody that's furthest away. So we'll take care of him. And now that's a four, that's a four. And we're down to the last one right there. And now this is a new graph. This is a new graph that has more edges, but now all of the vertices are even valence. So we can now find an Euler circuit. And again, we just guess. And where would you like the garage to be? Let's put the garage here. There's the garage. So this now, so I'm going to just try. I'm going to go, I'm going to try from, go around from up to the top and go like top down, see if it works. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm at the top. Now I'm going to try to keep, stay up at the top, but move down and then head left again. So here will be 8, 9, 10. Now in order to go back up again, I'm going to go this way so I can go up again. 11, 12, back down, 13. Now I'm right here. Don't want to go down. I can stay up. So here's 14. That row will be 15. Now I have no choice. I've gone on that one. So down. 16's right there. So now I'm going to go this way. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, up and down, 22 and 23 right here, 24, hmm, this guy's up, so I'm going to go 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, I don't want to get home yet, but I got some more roads to get here, uh, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, and 36, 37, right there, 38, 39, right there, oops, 6, 30, oh, I, I went 36, 37, I came down, sorry, I can't do that, that was, that was a mistake. Oh, not mistake, I'm here. But anyway, there's a little bit left to finish off, and, and we can finish it off. It's a guess. And if you miss something, you do that indexing slice and say, okay, I'm going to do 15.1, 15.2, etc. This is called Eulerization. And we use an algorithm to att attract it. And this algorithm I used was, was to Eulerize was a greedy. Who is furthest away? Let's take care of them first or it's a, a big first algorithm. Now, Eulerization can also make use of lengths, and this is much, much harder. So I'm gonna draw a graph here. And this is a graph, let's notice that the valence of here is two, two, three, three. So if you need to get home, you'd have to connect these two if you're using that algorithm. But if I added the lengths of the edges, and that would be called a weighted graph. So when I add in something beyond the normal structure, let's suppose I did this as a 2, 3, 7, 4, uh, 4. Well, it turns out duplicating this edge wouldn't be a very good way to go because it would add a length of 7. It would be nicer to duplicate this edge and this edge and then when you go around this place let's say you start this is there 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 you only drove an extra five where if you duplicated that edge it would have been seven this type of oilization is very difficult. And we do not have a good algorithm for it. That's a tough problem. And we won't cover weighted graph Eulerizations as a general concept. But an Eulerization of a regular graph, you bet we're going to do that. So let's do a very simple, we call these street maps. And let's put in the odd vertices.
And there's something kind of weird about this one. If we want to snow plow the street or oilerize it, everything's got a nearest neighbor. He's got a nearest neighbor, nearest neighbor, nearest neighbor. They've got lots of nearest neighbors by the number of duplicate edges. But this guy has one nearby neighbor, and if he was gone, then the next would be two. This guy is the same property, one nearby neighbor, but if he was gone, it would be two. These two are somehow special. They have two nearest neighbors. They're close to everything. So if you were to start this one using this, you go to the, the more difficult one first, you might pick one of these because they have one nearby neighbor, but the other's further away. So that's all right. So let's pick this guy randomly and say, fine. We're going to duplicate edge to its nearest neighbor. This is now even. And now we look at it again. This is a new graph because it's got a new edge. The dot is indicating it was a duplicate edge. This guy's got one nearest neighbor and another one two away. So it looks like this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy all have one nearby neighbor, but nobody else really that close. Well, I'll just pick one. I can pick this one. And say, let's duplicate this. And just like that, they go away. And now a really unique guy comes in. He's pretty far away from everybody. So his nearest three connection, or one, two, three, four, we would duplicate this way, taking care of the farthest away guy and bringing him to his nearest neighbor. And now it finishes off and finishes off. So now the question is, is this a good duplicate? Is this a good oilerization? I want you to notice that one duplicate edge take, took care of two bad guys. One took care of two bad guys. One took care of two bad guys. One took care of two bad guys, but it took three. Here is a general rule, and this is a rule to know, did I do good? Sounds weird, right? Did I do good? Do I do well? Well, there's an answer if, yes, you did perfect, but no other question can be answered. And it's answered in the following way. You look at your original graph, and you say, I had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 odd vertices. If you then use this rule, 10 divided by 2 equals 5, and now we ask, did we hit five duplicate edges? So I'm now going to look. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If we had hit five duplicate edges, then we would have known our job was perfectly done. But because we hit seven, our answer to this is a strange mathematical answer. You have to say, I don't know. Because five isn't seven. If we had gotten five, we could say, yes, it's a perfect answer best we can do. This is called an optimality test. We want to know if we've done something well. Well, well versus perfect, optimal, we can answer. But we don't know if this is not a not optimal situation. This might be perfect, but this rule doesn't tell you you're perfect. It just says you don't know if you've done it perfectly. Now, if somebody else does this problem and do it, does it with fewer duplicate edges, then you know yours isn't perfect, but our rule simply answers the question, did I do it perfect? The answer is yes, or I don't know. It's not a no. It's a very strange mathematical difficulty. Now, I was doing one thing that I really don't want you guys to give as a final answer when you draw a graph. So I'm going to draw a... Uh, Those are not duplicate edges, they are just curvy rows. Let's do the valence of this guy. Edges 2, 4, 2, 4, 4, 2, 4, 4, 2, 4, 5. Bad guy. 4, 4, 3. <coughs> this is a potential for an Euler route. We can start at the 3 and end at the 5 if we like, or start at the 5 and end at the 3, but it doesn't have an Euler circuit. 
You could Eulerize it very easy by noticing it's one, two, three to get to there, or one, two, three. Probably the, we'll do it this way. One, two, three. So our dupe edges equals three, which is not two divided by two or one. So we don't know if this is an optimal solution. The five is now a six. The four is now a six. The four is now a six. The three is now a four. Everything's even. So there's an Euler circuit. Now, without me showing you the Euler circuit, I'm going to hide this. And I just put in some arrows to indicate a path that I attempted. It didn't succeed because I didn't cover every edge. But I want you to notice just putting the arrows isn't enough to say what happened. First off, you really don't know where I started. Second, you can't necessarily duplicate what I did. What happens if you try to say, well, I did this first, second, third, fourth, well, then I only drew, drew four of them. These arrows weren't part of it. There's actually a way to follow these arrows and start here and end here, but without numbering them. So a general rule in finding and doing an Euler route or circuit is you number the edges in order. And numbering the edges is for an ordered graph is not a weighted graph. The weighted was when we were talking about like the lengths or the cost of doing an edge. But this numbering just indicates the order in which you do it. Now, if it's a real small graph, let's suppose this is like this, and we just labeled it A, B, C, D, and you chose not to number it, you could say, I'm going to do this, A to B to C, to D, to A, and you could say Euler route. And that is a perfectly valid way of, of writing what you've done. You can just write the letters. But it only seems to work really well for small problems. So a challenge for you is to have fun with the road, the what we call the spiral graphs. Find Euler circuits or Euler eyes or the street network graphs. Find Euler, Eulerizations for that and try to do them as best as you can. No real guarantee that you're going to be super efficient. All right, we're done with chapter one. And so now I'm going to give you a couple more problems to do in chapter one. And they are in the ex exercises. We're going to do number 38, which is an odd one. I need to point out 30, 38 is just introducing you to a new concept that we won't test on, but it talks about how to, to write things as duplicates without doing it the way we did it. Uh, then we're going to do 40, 42, 44, and then the last one is, oh, not quite the last one. 50, 56, and 60. Exercises from the end of chapter 1. All right.